Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. Now in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Retivis RT3S. Now this particular version of the RT3S which I have has the GPS built in. We'll talk more about that in another video. Now the RT3S is an FM and DMR dual band handheld transceiver. Now you may notice that this radio has exactly the same size and looks as the popular MD380, but one massive difference is that this radio the RT3S from Retivis has both VHF and UHF support. Now VHF covers from 136 to 174 megahertz and UHF covers from 400 to 480 megahertz. Now the radio itself, it runs from a lithium ion 2000 milliamp hour 7.4 volt battery and it has an output power of five watts on both VHF and UHF. There is also a low power setting where the radio can be set to one watt output for your more local contacts. Now the DMR side of the radio fully supports Moto Turbo Tier 1 and 2, so there's no issues with using this radio through your local ham radio DMR repeater. Now in the box comes the charger, battery, antenna, user's manual belt clip and a lanyard, although in the manual and specifications they refer to the lanyard as a sling. There is also a USB to radio programming cable included in the box, which is great because all you need to do then is pop over to the Retivis website and download the free programming software. You can also use this cable to update the firmware. Now when you download the firmware for this radio from the Retivis resource website, you'll notice that there'll be four different firmware versions within the zip file. Now these different firmware versions relate to whether the radio has GPS or not, and also whether you would like to have the voice record feature or have the CSV contacts database. Having the contacts database on the standard firmware is an absolute brilliant feature and now supports up to 120,000 contacts. Now what this allows you to do is download a database full of radio IDs which have the corresponding user's call sign and location stored within it. Now once loaded onto the radio and you start receiving transmissions, instead of just seeing the DMR ID shown on the display, you'll actually see the details of the person who is talking as well. This is really useful if you're talking to someone but you didn't catch their call sign. So all you need to do is take a look at the screen and you'll see instantly who it is. And if they've stored their name information in the database, then you'll see their name as well. Now I'll make a separate video on how to load firmware and the user database in the near future as this is what I believe makes this radio really worth while owning. The standard firmware feature also saves the hassle of experimenting with custom firmware like we used to do with the MD380. There is no need for that anymore. Promiscuous mode is also supported on here, although it is a global setting within the software. That's something that we can cover when we go through the programming. On the right hand side of the radio you can see a little rubber flap which reveals the location for the microphone and speaker connections. This is also used for the USB programming cable as well. In the hand it feels really solid and it's a really robust handheld radio. Now the PTT switch is on the left hand side which is pretty much where you find most PTTs and on the top you've got two controls. One is a volume on off control and the other one in the middle is for changing channel. The controls actually feel really nice and and really well built. Now as mentioned before it comes with a charger. This is a desktop charger so the radio just simply sits into the charger and you'll see the red light come on while it's charging. Now it's actually fast charging while it's red. Uh, if you notice a flashing red light it just means it's trickle charging because the battery was far too low. The other side of the charger is a connection that comes from the power supply which connects into your mains outlet. As with most handheld radios, this one has a detachable antenna and it reveals a female SMA connection. Now with the use of an adapter, you can actually connect it to the radio and then connect it to your outside antenna. Now most likely your outside antenna will have a SO239 or an N-type on it. Now my outside antenna comes down and it has a SO239. So as you can see through a concoction of adapters here, I've gone from uh, an SMA female to SMA. So 239. Now while using it as a base station I could actually plug in a speaker mic there on the right hand side and it'd be perfectly good as a 5 watt DMR radio to be used from my shack. Well there we go guys that's a brief overview of the RT3S by Retivis. I'm going to do a couple more videos on this particular product. I'm going to be covering how to do firmware and programming it and also we're going to be taking a look at how you can use the GPS option. So if you like this video, like this 
content please like it and please subscribe and you'll be notified when i upload some more content anyway hope you guys have a great rest of the day and we'll see you in the next one